This is a recording of a webinar which was co-produced with Parents and Carers in Suffolk and which explains annual reviews of Education, Health and Care or EHC plans. It is a long recording, so we have created timestamps in the description under this video on YouTube. So if you want to watch just part of this recording again, you can click on the timestamp for a particular section and the video will start at that point. This recording will explain the purpose of an annual review and the purpose of an Education, Health and Care or EHC plan from slide four. We'll look at the different stages of the annual review process and how you and your child are involved from slide 12. Also, what decisions can be made at the end of the annual review process from slide 54. And we'll finish by looking at early reviews, transfer reviews and preparation for adulthood from slide 65. This recording will refer frequently to the Special Educational Needs and Disability Code of Practice of 2015, which you can download for free if you would like to. Chapter 9 is all about EHC needs assessments, EHC plans and annual reviews. In order to understand the purpose of an annual review, we need to first understand the purpose of an EHC plan. So just to be clear, the purpose of an EHC plan is to make special educational provision, that means support, to meet the special educational needs of your child or young person. Also, to secure the best possible outcomes for them across education, health and social care. And I'm going to explain what we mean by an outcome in a minute. And as they get older, to prepare them for adulthood. The Children and Families Act puts a much greater focus on the need to support children and young people to develop the skills they will need for adult life while they are still in education. An outcome is what your child or young person will be able to do or achieve in an agreed time frame with the support outlined in the EHC plan. Remember, an EHC plan is a live document. So you can send copies of new reports, assessments and information to the Family Services team in the Suffolk Local Authority at any time. You don't have to wait for the annual review. It's important to remember that the plan needs to grow with your child as they get older, reflecting any changing needs or aspirations. So what is the purpose of an annual review? The annual review is a legal process to monitor the effectiveness of an EHC plan. In other words, to check that it's doing its job in making special educational provision to meet your child's special educational needs, in helping your child or young person to make progress towards the outcomes in education, health and social care, and helping them to prepare for adulthood. The SEND Code of Practice says, reviews must focus on the child or young person's progress towards achieving the outcomes specified in the EHC plan, and consider whether these outcomes and supporting short-term targets are still appropriate. So are the outcomes and targets relevant to what your child wants to do as they get older, and are they achievable? Have you in the learning setting been able to see the progress your child or young person has already made towards achieving the outcomes? Remember, most outcomes in an EHC plan are set over a key stage. For example, by the end of key stage two, Maddie will be able to walk unaided up and down the school stairs. So when you are halfway through that key stage, you and the school would expect to see quite a bit of progress. And we'll be looking at this in detail later on. The SEND code also says that reviews should check that the support from education, health and social care is working and helping your child to make good progress and consider if any changes are required, for example, changes to the outcomes in the EHCP or to the support or possibly to the learning setting. The annual review is more than just a review meeting. It is a process with several stages laid down in law and the review meeting is one part of this process. This flowchart to the right of your screen can be found on our annual review web pages. 
it breaks down the annual review process, which is laid down in law, into a series of steps. This is at the request of parents who asked for steps to make it clearer to understand. And we're going to look at each part of the process in this recording. The Send Code says that at least two weeks before the start of each term, the local authority family services team should contact all the head teachers and principals of nurseries, schools and colleges who have children with EHC plans, and also contact health and social care to let them know what annual reviews are due that term. The local authority must state which reviews will focus on transition and preparation to adulthood so that the educational settings, health and social care have enough time to prepare. As part of the annual review process, the local authority must make sure that a meeting takes place to review the EHC plan. They can ask the head teacher or principal to arrange and hold or host the meeting if the child or young person attends a maintained nursery or is at school or attending a pupil referral unit or a post-16 setting. This responsibility may in turn be delegated to the SENCO. The local authority will arrange the meeting for a child or young person who is not attending a school or other institution. This could take place at the family home, for example. This would be agreed between the local authority and the family. Annual review meetings can be delivered virtually by phone or video conference, if this is easier or safer. And since the pandemic, many learning settings have become more used to this. Some families and young people may prefer a virtual review meeting as they may find it easier to take part, especially if there are a number of practitioners invited. Before your review meeting is due, speak to your child and ask them what they would find more comfortable so that you have plenty of time to talk to the learning setting about how the meeting might work best. For the review meeting to be effective, good preparation is essential. So preparation is included in the stages of the annual review process, which is set out in law. So in step one, the host invites the following people to a review meeting and asks for written advice from each of these people, the child or young person and their parents, the learning setting if they attend one. If the child or young person is not attending school, then a person in the local authority who has experience and understanding of special educational needs will be invited. They must also invite a local authority SEN officer, and in Suffolk, this would be a member of the family services team, also a health service representative and a social care representative. And these invitations need to be sent out well in advance of the review meeting. And we're going to look at what the advice needs to focus on a little bit later in this recording. The host may also invite other people involved in supporting your child. For example, a therapist or perhaps a teacher from one of the specialist education services who may be supporting school to support your child. Like the specialist education service for pupils with speech, language and communication needs. Your child or young person may also want to invite someone trusted to support them to participate at the review meeting. Who is invited will depend on your child or young person's individual needs and their individual circumstances. In line with the Children and Families Act of 2014 and the SEND Code of Practice, reviews must be undertaken in partnership with a child and their parent or the young person and must take account of their views, wishes and feelings. So your views and your child's views are therefore really important. The local authority, school or college should support you to take part. And you can also contact our impartial Sendia service for help and advice and support. Here in Suffolk, the family services team has produced two kinds of form for families to use to share their views. One of the forms asks questions using traditional boxes like a table. This is a picture of the first two pages of the second type of form, which uses shapes, as you can see here. Both types of form have the same questions. 
so whoever is hosting the meeting should send a form to you which looks similar to this. At the end of the day, however, you don't have to use these forms to send in your views. You could type up and send in your own document, or you could send in a recording of your voice giving your views, if you find that easier. What is important is that you are given the chance to share your views well before the meeting takes place. So let's look at what will be helpful to think about when you're preparing your views. Firstly, think about what progress your child has made towards the outcomes in the EHC plan. If your child has not made progress in some areas, what do you think might need to change to help your child to move forward? Do you think that new strategies of support are needed? Or new advice or an assessment? Is the learning setting still appropriate? On the forms, there is a box or shape for comments, and if you have ideas as to what might need to change, you can include them here. Other points to think about include, have there been any new assessments or observations recently? Have any new needs been identified for your child? Have any of the outcomes in the EHC plan already been achieved? Let's just pause for a minute to think about how practitioners might be involved. We explained earlier that some practitioners who are or have been working with your child from education, health and social care may be invited to the review meeting and asked to provide some up-to-date advice. And this advice will focus on your child's progress towards the outcomes in the EHC plan and any recommendations which these practitioners might suggest. However, some other practitioners may play a very important role in helping your child or young person to identify and express their own views and feelings and what kind of support helps them most as part of the preparation for the meeting. Others may have built a trusted relationship with your child or young person and may be happy to support them to participate at the meeting itself. Your child or young person's views are especially important. Remember, if they are not comfortable with some of the support in the plan, then they are not going to make good progress. Some of the things they might want to think about include what have they been enjoying and what are their dreams for the future? What kind of support have they found has helped them most? What are they continuing to struggle with? And what do they think might make it better? Sometimes it can help to ask your child or young person if they woke up tomorrow and it was the best day, what would be different? Remember what is important to your child or young person, in other words, what matters to them, may be very different to what you or practitioners believe is important for them. In other words, what you think good support looks like. The Council for Disabled Children has created a helpful video called the EHC Plan and the Person-Centred Connection, which looks at the importance of making sure that the child or young person is at the centre of an EHC plan. Many children and young people may find it hard to clarify and to share their views, thoughts and feelings. Remember, you can encourage them to contact our Sendia service if they would like help in getting things clear in their heads, if they're feeling muddled or confused or overwhelmed, and if they'd like help in sharing their thoughts and feelings. As they get older, they could get the help of an independent advocate through Total Voice Suffolk. This includes pupils with communication difficulties. Your child could ask to meet with a member of the local authority family services team with or without you. It is important that children and young people are given the opportunity and supported to give their views separately if they would like this. On our website, we have links to websites like the Chef Kids organisation, which have a variety of one page profile templates like you can see here. A one page profile captures all the important information about a person on a single sheet of paper under three simple headings, what people appreciate about me or what they like and admire about me, what's important to me or makes me happy and how best to support me. These deceptively simple summaries really can help a child or young person's voice to be at the centre. If you want to find out more, 
The Suffolk Psychology and Therapeutic YouTube channel has a short video which explains how to create a one-page profile and how they can help people of any age. The Preparing for Adulthood organisation has lots of useful resources to help young people think about and share their views. This leaflet, Planning My Future Life, has a number of templates which you or practitioners working with your child or young person may find helpful. This is a PowerPoint template which some children and young people in Suffolk have found helpful. It can be found on the Leaflets and Resources webpage of our Sendias website in Suffolk. Each box that you can see here is a different slide of the PowerPoint and the child or young person can choose to use one or two slides or all of them, uploading their photos or other pictures as they would like. Some children have chosen to email the slides to their school Senko to share their views before the annual review meeting. But we've also known of children who have presented their PowerPoint at the beginning of the annual review meeting themselves, perhaps with the support of a member of their family. If your child or young person would like to present their PowerPoint, this can of course still be done virtually. Some children have chosen to send in just one or two of the slides, often uploading their own photos. In this example, the child has chosen to show some approaches and resources which help them with sensory and other needs like stroking a soft cushion or using a chew necklace to help them self-regulate. And this example shows the visuals and tools which help this young person to learn and to express their feelings. Sometimes children or young people like simply to send in some pictures of people or animals who are important to them. The organisation Mind of My Own has a young person app which young people can download for free regardless of whether an organisation is registered with them. This app was co-produced by young people for young people to help them share their views, particularly if they struggle to talk to someone about their thoughts and feelings. So we've talked about the importance of you and your child preparing your views and also practitioners invited to the annual review meeting preparing their views or advice. And I mentioned earlier that preparing views and information needs to happen well in advance of the review meeting. This is because the law says that at least two weeks before the review meeting, the information gathered from your child or young person, from you and professionals, needs to be sent out to everyone invited. This is really important as you, your child and the practitioners need time to go through it all so that you can be properly prepared for the review meeting itself. If you know that your child's review is due at the start of a term, you can be proactive in the term before. You can remind the learning setting and any practitioners that you know are involved with your child that up-to-date information will be needed for next term's review and ask them if they're of the form that they would like you to use so that everyone's information can be shared two weeks before the meeting. And remember, you can download the form yourself from the local offer. So although there isn't a time frame in law for when invitations to the review meeting are sent out with the request for information, this must happen in enough time for the information to be shared with everyone at least two weeks before the review meeting as the law requires. So it's really helpful for parents and practitioners to start thinking well in advance. So now we get to the stage in the annual review process where a meeting is held between the pupil, if they're able to attend, the parents, the host, and as many of the practitioners invited who can attend. So just to be clear, health and social care practitioners may not be able to attend, but they will have been invited and asked to share any updated information about your child in advance of the meeting. There are several thousand annual reviews in Suffolk every year, so the family services team will only be able to attend some key review meetings. If you believe it's important for a member of the family services team to attend the next annual review meeting, contact them in advance to explain your reasons. Although you will have shared your views and your child's views in advance, many people find it helpful to have a copy of what you sent in or a list of their main points to hand, to refer to, and also to help keep them focused 
during the review meeting. If the meeting is being held over the phone or using a laptop or notebook, make sure you have some paper nearby so that you can jot down your questions and make any notes as the meeting takes place. Maybe you want to refer to a recent report or a recent assessment. If so, it's helpful to have highlighted the sections you want to talk about in advance so that you can find them quickly. Remember to include any new information about your child which you would like to share. The SEND code states that reviews must be undertaken in partnership with the child and their parent or the young person and must take account of their views, wishes and feelings. This goes back to Section 19 of the Children and Families Act, which says that local authorities must have regard to the views, wishes and feelings of children, young people and their parents and the importance of supporting them to take part. So review meetings should be person-centred with the child or young person's involvement at the heart. As we mentioned earlier, take time to think about how your child might like to be involved in the review meeting and share your ideas with the learning setting so that everyone can agree a format which your child will feel comfortable with. This will also help them appreciate that they are the most important person in an annual review and help them understand that this review meeting is all about making sure that everyone gets the support right for them in their EHC plan. A virtual review meeting may be easier for your child to take part in. Your child or young person may feel much more relaxed at home. They may find it less intimidating to talk to other practitioners remotely rather than face to face. They may already feel very familiar with talking to others remotely using media like WhatsApp or FaceTiming to speak to their friends. And an EHC plan might be uploaded and shared on screen we have heard of where some young people have been happy to edit their plan live themselves when it has been shared on screen in this way. Although the whole process of an annual review is laid out in law, the actual format of the review meeting can differ from setting to setting, but the SEN code is clear that it should follow the principles of a person-centred review with your child or young person at the heart. From our annual review webpage, you can link to the Helen Sanderson organisation and website, which has a lot of free person-centred resources, templates, videos and guides around person-centred reviews, which you might find helpful. And you'll also be able to access this leaflet, which you can see on the right, which goes through the principles of a person-centred review meeting. The Psychology and Therapeutics Service in Suffolk can offer training to schools around a person-centred approach to reviews called PATH. PATH is a style of solution-focused planning where one of two trained facilitators will draw on large pieces of paper on the wall to represent the young person's path forward. Everyone attending is encouraged to be involved in adding agreed actions on the papers. Our annual review webpage links to some further information about PATH if you would like to find out more. For any practitioners watching this recording, the Council for Disabled Children have produced a helpful Top Tips to Support the Participation of Children and Young People guide, which you might find helpful. So before we go any further, this is just a quick reminder that the SEN Code of Practice says that reviews must focus on the child or young person's progress towards achieving the outcomes specified in the EHC plans. Remember, outcomes are the statements in the plan which explain what your child will be able to do in an agreed amount of time with the support outlined in the plan. And the review must also consider whether these outcomes and any short-term targets remain appropriate and whether changes are needed. Reviews should also check that the support from education, health and social care is working and helping your child to make good progress and consider if any changes are required, for example, possible changes to the outcomes or to the support in the plan or possibly to the learning setting. Here is a screenshot of a couple of pages of one of the Suffolk Annual Review Report Forms, which the host of the review meeting will need to fill out at the end. The local authority has three kinds of annual review forms, one for pupils in year eight and below, 
one for pupils in year nine and above, and a plan for students moving to adulthood. You can download any of these forms from the local offer. And what we're looking at here is a year eight and below form. If you download it, it may help you understand the sort of questions the learning setting or host will ask and the kind of information that you might want to prepare. This is a screenshot of a couple of pages in the Moving to Adulthood plan. And there are some filled in examples available on the local offer for you to download to give you an idea. Annual reviews also provide an opportunity to check that the outcomes and provision or support in the plan are specific and clear so that everyone's understanding of them is the same. Also, to check that the plan is written in a way that is clear and easy for children and young people and their parents and carers to understand, which is what the SEND code expects of an EHC plan. We have a video on our Suffolk SENDES YouTube channel called Drafting and Finalising an EHC Plan. Even if your child has had an EHC plan for a while, you might still find it helpful to watch as the video explains what a good EHC plan should look like. Remember, a good EHC plan should describe positively what your child can do, be clear, understandable and easy to read by you and your child as far as they are able, include good relevant outcomes and tell your child's story well and clearly. So if you read it and it still sounds like a description of a child at primary school and your child is now a teenager, then it needs updating and you can start to think about what might need changing in time to share your views for the annual review meeting. You should have been invited to prepare and share your views at least two weeks before the review meeting, but you may of course like to ask questions or share information at the meeting itself too. Remember the annual review process is all about making sure that your child's EHC plan is working. In other words, checking that it is supporting your child to make progress in their learning and progress towards the skills they need in later life. So you should expect the learning setting or other host to share the progress your child has made towards the outcomes in education. And if you have the involvement of health and social care, you should expect to hear information shared from them, either in the form of a report or face to face if they can attend the meeting. So, for example, if there has been little or no progress, then what will the learning setting be recommending on the report form as a next step? Are they recommending a new strategy of support? If they have exhausted their own ideas, are they recommending that new advice be sought from a practitioner? Do they still feel that this learning setting is the right one for your child? And what do you and your child think? Do share if any new needs have been identified recently for your child. Perhaps there's been a recent assessment. The school or other host can send this new information in with their report and recommend that the plan be updated to include the new information. Do encourage your child or young person to take part in the meeting too, to share their questions and thoughts. The experience of the pandemic has been difficult for many pupils and school may still feel a little different, so perhaps they would like help given in a different way. Remind them that no question is a silly question. The next stage in the process is where the meeting host prepares and sends a report of the meeting to everyone invited. They must do this within two weeks of the annual review meeting. In general, if your child is making progress with the support set out in the EHC plan, then you and the learning setting will likely recommend that the plan stays as it is, unless there are major changes planned in the future, for example, a change of school. However, if it was agreed at the meeting that changes to the plan should be made, for example, because a new need has been identified for your child, the report will include the recommendations for change. If there is no agreement because of conflicting opinions given at the meeting, the school should still record all the different views so that the local authority is aware of them. They need all the information to help them come to their decision. When you receive the report, if you don't understand it, speak to whoever held the meeting and wrote the report, which will be either the learning setting or the local authority if your child is not in school or college. 
We sometimes hear from parents who share that they have thought of other important points or their child has shared something new after the review meeting has finished and the report has been prepared. You can still share these views with the Family Services team through, for example, emailing them. Now we come to the final stage in the annual review process, where the local authority reviews the report and any recommendations, and within four weeks of the review meeting, they must reach a decision and they must notify the child's parents or the young person and the learning setting. The annual review is not complete until the local authority has notified you of their decision. The local authority can make one of the following decisions, either to keep the EHC plan as it is, and this will be when there is evidence in the review report that the strategies in the plan are working and evidence of your child's progress against the outcomes in the plan, or they will tell you they are going to amend the plan following recommendations, or they will decide to cease the plan. The local authority will only cease an EHC plan if the outcomes in the EHC plan have all been achieved. In other words, the plan has done exactly what it's meant to do and has helped your child to make progress in all the areas they were struggling in and now they are able to work alongside their peers without the need for the kind of extra support which was outlined in the plan. Or it will cease if a young person decides they do not want to continue in any learning or training. Remember, a young person can still have an EHC plan, even if they are not in a formal learning environment like a college. They just need to be in some form of education or training and they still need the extra support to learn. This includes work-based learning. For example, they could be learning through organisations like Lapwing or doing a traineeship through an organisation like WS Training. The plan could cease if your young person chooses to take up a job, unless they are doing a supported internship, as this is still training to support them to move into employment. Or it could cease if they move on to university. This doesn't mean that a young person won't be able to get support at university. It's just a student will need to apply for help through the Disabled Student Allowance Scheme instead. And it's best if they declare their needs when they apply for a place at university. The SEND code is clear that if a local authority is considering ceasing a plan, they must inform your child or young person and they must consult with the parents or the young person and the learning setting named in the EHC plan. Do contact our Sendia service or encourage your young person to do so if you are uncertain about this. If the local authority decides to keep the EHC plan as it is, or if they decide to cease it, they must notify you and explain to you or your young person that you have a right to appeal and the time limits. Explain that you must consider mediation if you do decide to appeal. And explain your right to information, advice and support through a service like ours. If the local authority decides to amend the plan, the SEND code says they should start the process of amendment without delay. And they must send to you or your young person a copy of the unchanged version of the EHC plan, along with a notice outlining the suggested changes so that it's clear to you what the changes will look like. And the SEND code says that you or your child may request a meeting with the local authority to discuss the proposed changes. And they must include the supporting evidence for the suggested changes. And they must give you or your young person at least 15 calendar days to go through the information and to give your views. You can contact our Sendia service if you would like help in going through the information and or help in clarifying and sharing your views. When you have returned your views, the local authority must issue the amended EHC plan as quickly as possible and within eight weeks of sending you the original amendment notice. They must explain to you that you have a right to appeal 
and the time limits to do this, and that you must consider mediation if you do decide to appeal, and they must explain that you have a right to information, advice and support. This slide is just to remind you that if you did decide to appeal, there is information about appeals on our website, including videos to help parents and carers and young people fill in an appeal form. We also have a video which explains mediation, how it might help you, how to prepare for a mediation meeting, what happens at the meeting and afterwards, which you might find helpful. Now we've talked about how changes can be made to an EHC plan as part of the annual review process to make sure that it remains relevant to the needs of your child or young person and the outcomes in the plan. The SEND code recognises that there may be occasion when a reassessment will be helpful, particularly when a child or young person's needs change significantly. The SEND code says that the local authorities must conduct a reassessment of a child or young person's EHC plan if a request is made by the child's parent or the young person or by the educational setting or the clinical commissioning group or an NHS trust. A local authority may also decide to start a reassessment without a request if it thinks it is necessary. A local authority can refuse a request for reassessment if less than six months have passed since the last EHC needs assessment or if they think it's not necessary. If a full reassessment is required, that process should be started without delay. The maximum time for this is 14 weeks from the date of the decision to reassess. The Children and Families Act states that the whole annual review process, including all the stages we've talked about in this recording, and including the local authority notifying you of their decision, must take place within 12 months of the issue of the final EHC plan, or within 12 months of the completion of the last annual review. Remember, the annual review is not complete until you have received the local authority decision. For children under five years of age, the SEND code recommends that local authorities consider reviewing the plan every three to six months, but these reviews could be streamlined and may not involve all professionals. However, the child's parent must be consulted over any proposed changes and given the right to appeal. Where an EHC plan is amended, the SEND code states that the following review must be held within 12 months of the date of issue of the original EHC plan or within 12 months of the previous review, not 12 months from the date the amended EHC plan is issued. You can request an early review, for example, if you believe that your child or young person's education, health or social care needs have changed and are no longer accurately described in the EHC plan, or if you believe that the education, health or social care provision, which means support in the plan, is no longer meeting your child's needs. And this includes if you feel that section I, the educational placement, needs to be reviewed, or if you believe your child is in crisis, for example, vulnerable to permanent exclusion or regularly school refusing. However, any such review is at the discretion of the local authority and there is no legal duty to arrange it. If you are requesting an emergency review, ask the local authority to run it as an annual review with the same time scales, and this will then trigger appeal rights if you are not happy with the outcomes. Now let's consider transfer reviews. A local authority must review an EHC plan when a child or young person transfers from one stage of education to another. The SEND code is clear that an EHC plan must be reviewed and amended in sufficient time prior to a child or young person moving between phases of education to allow for planning and, where necessary, for the commissioning of support and provision at the new institution. The transfer from a secondary school to a post-16 institution or an apprenticeship 
the EHC plan must be reviewed and amended by the 31st of March in the year of transfer. For other stage transfers, for example, transferring from an early year setting to primary or from a primary to a secondary school, the deadline is the 15th of February in the year of transfer. For a transfer between two post-16 placements, amended EHC plans must be issued at least five months before the new placement. These dates override the normal date for review because the law recognises that your child or young person needs time to prepare for a transfer and for the right support to be agreed. You will be asked to name your preferred school or setting and the local authority must consult with that setting and they must name the setting in the EHC plan unless there is a lawful reason for them not to do so. Any such reason would need to be clearly explained to you and you will have a right to appeal if you are unhappy with their decision. The EHC plan needs to be amended, including naming the setting by the transfer deadline. So for example, for transfer reviews from a primary to a secondary setting, the annual review process usually starts in the autumn term with the gathering of information in order for the process to be completed by the 15th of February. We have further information about choosing and naming a school in an EHC plan on our SendES website, along with information about annual reviews, which may help you. Preparation for adulthood must be part of annual reviews from year nine onwards. So you could highlight new or ongoing care needs, you can tell the local authority if you believe your child may need an assessment of these needs in preparation for adulthood. For teenagers, preparation for adult life needs to be an explicit element of their planning and support. So discussions about their future should focus on what they want to achieve and the best way to support them to achieve. The SEND code suggests that it can be helpful for EHC plan reviews before year nine to have a focus on preparing for adulthood too. The SEND code says that transition planning must be built into the revised EHC plan and should result in clear outcomes being agreed that are ambitious and stretching and which will prepare young people for adulthood. Planning must be centered around the individual so the EHC plan will fit the individual young person, not the other way around. Local authorities should ensure that children and young people have the support they need, for example, maybe an advocate, to participate fully in the planning and to make decisions. As this image shows, preparing for adulthood means support to prepare for higher education and or employment, and this will include pathways and training options like supported internships or apprenticeships or traineeships. And the review should also cover support in finding a job and learning how to do a job, for example, through work experience. Also, it means support to prepare for independent living, including exploring what decisions young people want to make for themselves, where they want to live in the future and who with, what support they will need, and looking at local housing options. Preparation for adulthood also means preparing for participating in society, including support in developing and maintaining friendships and relationships, managing transport and participating in and contributing to the local community. And finally, preparation for adulthood includes support in being as healthy as possible in adult life. So this might include effective planning with health services for transition to adult services. The organisation preparing for adulthood, which I referred to earlier in this webinar, have produced a guide for year nine annual reviews, which we link to from our annual review web page. The preparing for adulthood website also includes a helpful post 16 checklist. If a young person has an EHC plan and is aged under 18, but is not currently receiving education and training for whatever reason, the SEN regulations state that the local authority must review the plan 
to ensure that the young person continues to receive educational training. Whilst this is not strictly an annual review, the local authority must conduct the review in accordance with SEN regulations, which means they must follow the steps set out in this webinar. There is further information about annual reviews on the Council for Disabled Children website, which includes a helpful video, and also on our Suffolk Sendias annual review webpage, and we have a leaflet which might help you too. This video was made by Suffolk Sendias, but every county has an impartial and confidential send, information, advice and support service.